Alrighty. I pushed Mike's Jeep out for a minute to work on the tow truck. Got a package today. Got me some of these here brunt boots. Let's see what these things look like. Probably see advertisements all over for these boots. The owner of the company reached out to me and offered me a set of boots to try. So I'm going to try them. See what they uh, see what they look like. All right. Ooh, them's fancy. I like that. Yeah, I'll have to try them on. I'll tell you how it goes. Seems like a pretty awesome company. So we got our trail gear, trail gear, trail ready hydraulic ram. Put a tab on the front end right there, and uh, wait on a hind joint. I'll weld that in right there, and then I got hydraulic lines made already. And that takes care of that. Still working on the doubler, so I'll show you what I got going on under here. Um, so, this 205 transfer case has a pretty big spacer adapter on it. That's this piece right here to here. This is what they call the, the, the early style long overdrive. And uh, I have a short overdrive out of a late model that I'm gonna switch that out with. And I'm thinking if Paul gave me the right measurements, my cousin Paul gave me some measurements off one he has in his tow truck. And uh, it looks like it's gonna be within about 3 eighths of an inch. Um, might be a little bit shorter, so what I'll do is shorten the front drive shaft I either need to shorten the front or shorten the rear anyway because they're a little bit tight. Um, the front one would probably survive, but if it moves forward, I'll shorten the rear. But anyway, the difference in the overdrives is the early overdrive has a governor in it, which is a weight. And uh, when I take it apart, I can show you what I'm talking about. That's what makes it shift. The governor creates a, a pressure back to the valve body, tells it when to shift. So it's measuring the wheel speed off the shaft. The new overdrives are electronic. So what I'm gonna to do to delete all of that is I'm gonna go full manual valve body like I did in my boat. And hopefully I can get that valve body to work. I'll probably maybe go down and see the guys at tier one again and uh, have them build me a valve body. That way I ain't got a horse with it. They can run it on their dyno and it'll be correct. Yeah, transmission woes. Drive shafts out of it. Transmission out of it. Okay, it's a mess over here. Something you want to do with these D diesels, all the Dodge diesels, up until like 99, I believe, somewhere in there. This front planetary is aluminum. And uh, this one just happened to be four pinion because it's an early transmission. But you replace that with a five, and they make a six now. I don't know that it's any better, but you definitely want to do a five steel. Because otherwise, you get this. It rips the splines out of the inside. Here's a look at my overdrive unit. You see how this is about four and three eighths shorter. And then there's an adapter on the transfer case that's four inches. Well, you lose all of that. And the doubler is like eight and a half inches. So it's within like a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch of being the same. Um, we're going to upgrade this band in the transmission if we can and put the newer style in it. I got a new uh, a new front band. We're going to go through all the clutches, make sure everything's good. We're going to stack the overdrive like I did in the boat with uh, the extra clutches. But yeah, I've got transmissions apart all over the place. This is a gas transmission I junked out just for the overdrive unit overdrive unit and a lot of the internals are the same on the gas transmissions they just do lighter planetaries and stuff like that and a few less less clutch discs so we'll get this cleaned up and start putting it back together well it's about eight o'clock now and uh it's been a heck of a day but transmission is back in shed some light on that i didn't put the overdrive unit on yet because i'm gonna made it up to the doubler and make sure I got good spline contact but uh, yeah 
just refreshing the uh, transmission and converted it to a full manual valve body and installed uh, extra heavy clutch packs and obviously the uh, planetaries planetary upgrade the uh, overdrive was a massive upgrade too so on the overdrive uh, these early trucks um, on the early overdrives the first gens have straight cut gears they're five pinion planetary but they're straight cut gear so what I did was I put five pinion helical cut gears they run a little quieter and there's actually believe it or not with the helical cut your tooth is crossways so it's actually a little wider gear it actually makes more contact so um, I also put in the uh, TCS 41 40 chrome ollie output shaft because that is my weak link right there that is a spindly little 23 spline output shaft but with the chrome ollie one they said they've never broke one they've never had one come back anyway so I'm hoping that I ain't the first one to break one um, otherwise we've got to build the doubler still it should be here later on in the week uh, probably going to take a trip to Dan's auto salvage tomorrow and see if I can find an input shaft for the Chevy doubler uh, 23 spline so I'll share some of that tomorrow Jimmy and I were on our way to uh, where the hell are we going? Junkyard. Oh yeah, Dan's. Kingman. Dan. Kingman Dan. Yes sir. We're driving the Jetta. This is my thousand dollar Jetta. We're going to make this into a pickup. It's a diesel. Stick shift, of course. Yeah, it's getting 47 miles to the gallon. I'm going to try to get it up over 60. So stay tuned for some of that. But yeah, we're going to cut the back of this thing off and use a, a Smith Ute kit. Mark Smith makes a kit to turn this into a pickup, so we're going to do that down the road. Stay tuned. Okay, we just pulled up here at Dan's Auto Salvage. Check this place out. It's hard to see, but there's a bus up on top of the roof. And uh, there's this guy sitting here. Um, and he just looks like an old guy from town that's just hanging out. But this right here is Dan Sr. Dan, say hi to the world. Hi world. How many years young are you today? 83. 83 years young. And he just finished what he said was his last trip across the country delivering rust-free Arizona trucks. Where'd you take them? Iowa? Ohio. Ohio. Takes them to Ohio so that people can put rust-free bodies on their trucks. Well, good to see you, Dan. We're going to go, I'm going to go find Dan Jr. and we're going to go find some parts. Okay, I hope you find some. Hey, you got a lot of good stuff here. So let's go check this place out. Yeah, I got a look, probably. Yeah. Do you want to get a Jack's or not? Well, this is on an This is uh, Joey. Joey is uh, the third generation of Dan's auto salvage. Um, but yeah, check this hoopty out. It's got a little bit of dash left in it. 12 valve, hot rod. Straight out There's the, the, the crusher we moved during COVID times. Boy, that was a good time. And then Dan, he's out here playing on the biggest forklift I've ever seen. Look at that thing. It's under here, huh? <laughs> Keep the water out of it. Well, yeah, okay. So what we're looking for might be underneath of this. I love it. What's going on, Dan? What's happening? I don't know. We're just here looking for junk. I like your I like your hiding spots. We just put yeah. a my bed was on top of that. On oh, top of that. Oh, and, and it I, blew off. No, I was coming by there one day and I was following a tourist through there, and the tourist the hit it and knocked it over. Swept it off onto the. It swept it onto the ground. So the stuff's been preserved underneath there. Oh. You need to come forward a little? Yeah, come here. Things are getting western. Crazy, that forklift is huge. Petty bone mercury.
It's in. It's in the white box, huh? You would have never guess that. Out of all of the acreage here, it, it's That's in this. Stuff. It's in this white box. <laughs> okay. Is there going to be a rattlesnake in there? Maybe. I like it. Can you help? Uh, okay. Uh, it's kind of, it might be a, kind of wedged. <laughs> yeah, there it yeah. is, right there. Get you some of that. That's the whole thing, and it's unbolted and ready to go. I love it. It looks like maybe you were building something, this Dan. Is, this is all the leftover shit from when I did my doubler on my. Okay. On my so there's a whole 205 transfer case. Yep. Oh, that's a round pattern, too. That's a. What is that? That's a Ford uh, driver's side drop, right? Look at the uh, tag on it. I think it's the. You tell them to read the directions. New process. <laughs> 1978. I can't remember. Yeah, I think that's driver's side drop forward, but yeah, that's the piece we need right there. Oh, I know why. Because I robbed the. Uh, I robbed some parts out of that to make to make mine have a uh, 32 spline output shafts okay. in my Chevy 205. Right. So I robbed some parts out of that to put the bigger, stronger yokes on it. So what he's talking about is these these yokes right here normally are, what are they, 20, 27, 27 spline? They're a lot smaller. So the Dodge diesel and some of the old Fords, they have a larger spline output and it's a lot heavier duty. So you rob the, uh, rob the older uh, transfer cases. Output shaft, yeah. And then uh, you get the heavy output. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. We'll dig this thing out of here and load it up. I don't know. This thing's weighing as much as a Chevy. A small Chevy. And the reason there's an extra one of them is because well, that one looked a little pitted and funky inside. Yeah, just a little bit. And uh, I Mostly just, I what just, I need is this because I've got another one of these that's cherry. But... Heck yeah, we can put the bed back on that. Pick that up with the truck. Nice. Thanks, Jimmy. Hey, no problem. Look at all this good stuff. The only thing I got to say back here is watch for rattlesnakes. Watch for rattlesnakes. What I'm looking for here is uh, a shifter for a first gen four wheel drive shifter yeah that's not going to have any shifter and that shifter's been robbed Look at that leaning tower of power Just the yard. So, Dan, Yo. uh, how many acres of cars do you think you have here? There's about 20 acres with cars on it. Probably. So, obviously, I've been in all these yards. This is this is one yard right here. This is kind of your main yard. Mm -hmm. um, then you have a secondary yard up a little bit north of you. Yep. Um, tell me about this yard across the railroad tracks. Well, it's uh, it's on a piece of property where that we had sold and the uh we're, we had a lease on it for 10 years and now somebody's offered to buy their whole property so i think we're going to lose our lease on that land over there and there's about four but i counted them from a google from space and there's like <laughs> 396 cars i counted oh my 396 so, cars approximately you know a guy's bored when he's got google and he's going how many cars do i have one two three four five six <laughs> well i had to figure out how how what it was going to take to get them all out of there you know so here's here's the deal uh, I got a video of some cars here and, uh, he's going to be selling some of this off pretty reasonable so that he doesn't have to move it. 
and or crush it. So anybody interested in these old car projects, most of them are Arizona rust free. And uh, if you see anything for parts, um, call Dan. I'll put the number up on the uh, screen to the junkyard. And don't waste him with a bunch of dumb questions. Come out with real money and try to buy some of these cars. But I'll show you right here, even in this yard, check out this little Nova just sitting here in the yard. There's a lot of that kind of stuff in the other yard and it is mostly older stuff, correct? Right, it's so, all 70s and older. 5067. It's a dirty windshield, but hey, we'll, we'll clean it here. We'll clean a little, we'll clean a little film spot. There we go. Look at that storm out there. So we're heading over to uh, this yard right now where all these uh, precious old cars are. How long have they been over there, Joey? Since the 50s. So in the 1950s, this was kind of a wrecking yard. Believe it or not, it was right off of Route 66. So Route 66 runs through the middle of this, this yard that we were just in. In fact, where we did that last interview with Dan, we were standing literally on the edge of Route 66. So basically this, this uh, yard up here has become almost landlocked. In fact, it's a guarded uh, yard, but uh, they're losing their lease on it. And they used to own the property, but they sold it. They're gonna have to clean it up. So we'll show you those cars right now. Okay, so now it's raining on the other side of town. We took a 10 minute drive up here to this little yard. So here's the deal. This stuff's gonna be priced pretty freaking reasonable. These little projects, some of them are parts cars. So if you're looking for specific parts, again, don't waste a lot of time with Dan, but he'll know if he's got this stuff here as he's cleaning this up. But like, um, I like to sell whole, whole cars. That really would, want to mess yeah. around with some that would be the best thing is he, even if you need parts, you need to come here, get the whole car, and buy it for parts. He's going to be selling it as per parts because obviously his only option is to probably crush it and put it in a pile over there. So let's do a quick walk through here and look at some of these. I mean, this little Dodge pickup right here. This is an excellent little rat rod project. Um, you got a station wagon here, old, old Plymouth or Chrysler. Um, these vans, there's several of these vans in here, these old Dodge D100 vans. And again, all of this stuff, if you look at the bottom of it, it is rust free. These are Arizona cars, um, you know, old Dodge Dart. Um, yeah, there, I mean, there, there's a bunch of stuff like this that's going to end up getting crushed, but there's a lot of a lot of good old cars out here. I mean, we haven't even got to the good stuff, the Chevelles and the Camaros, and here's a Dodge Dart wagon. Again, completely rust-free, zero canker anywhere. Great little project. Dodge Charger. Just goes on some old Chevy pickups so there's a little row here of uh, Chevy Novas just yeah great little project cars it's got some four-door stuff for you know guys restoring the two doors I don't know some some guys like to restore the uh, the four doors now Anybody need Cadillac parts, old Pontiac parts, Mustang parts, Mustang twos. A lot of good parts left on these cars for guys that need these uh, body panels and quarter panels and things. So yeah, you need to hit Nan up. He's 
going to have a forklift over here. He'll be able to load you and deal with your whatever you got. Bring money and trailer. Bring money and trailer. I like that. That's almost as good as uh, this here Corvair with a roll bar. <laughs> Flared out Corvair with a roll bar. Let's check this thing out. I mean, this thing is something special. Corvette? No, it's a Corvair. Another Camaro. Chevy 2 parts. And a Volvo. Of course there's a Volvo. Anybody looking for a old 60s Volvo four door not a bad old car it's got got a little bit of damage on the hood but there's no rust in it and uh, most of the trim is here trunk is here rear windows gone but yeah not bad Get this junk. Yeah, these guys call it crusher food, crusher. so we need to not let it go to the uh, crusher. There's a lot of good parts here. I mean, there's a whole front clip on a Chevy tube right there. Arizona rust free, good stuff. Still plenty of two door projects, lots of good stuff. Uh, we're just uh, trucking back from Dan's. This video probably doesn't do this justice, but uh, visibility is visibility is getting down right here. <laughs> it's it's kind of blowing and going. I'm working on this uh, Northwest Fab adapter kit, doubler, 23 spline input here, two to one here, two to one here. Transfer case is built. I redid the transmission. Go. Short overdrive. I've got my shifter set up over here. Got to build that. And uh, full manual valve body. I had to uh, notch the cross member here for that doubler. So we're about ready to put this thing in and see how it lines up. Got that hydraulic assist steering going. Yeah, got the ram on there. Works good. Got the hoses. So yeah, looking good Back on this thing. We're going to go test drive it here in a minute. I got the transfer case in, a doubler, got the shifter, three, three levers up there, and I uh, had to shorten the drive shaft a little in the rear. Took about an inch out of it, so this moved back about I was thinking it was going to be a 16th, but it was about 3 8 So, actually worked out good because my front drive line was a little short after I turned the front end up. But, uh, let's take it for a spin. Maybe go uh, see if the air locker works. Check some things out. So, this is my little test spot. It's over here in the wash. It's a big rock right here. That's the same shape that'll climb up on there. Everything looks good. I like that double. I like that low range. It looks pretty good, so set this camera up. See if we can get a little footage. All neighbors are like wigging out. What's he doing? Yeah, I live in the city, so we have to improvise. But yeah, this is a wash. There's some good obstacles.
twist up nicely. Good articulation. I can't see the rear one, so I don't know. Oh yeah, there's that one. Yeah, that, that left rear looks like it's moved a little bit. The right rear looks good, but the left rear, it has definitely moved. So, if we look at that mark, just the, the rim has rotated back on it. So the rim rotated back on the left rear. So they will walk a little on the rim. I figured they'd probably walk a little, but I don't know. We'll see what they do at five pounds. I like it. I don't know that it's ready for buggy trails, but it's ready for some fun, that's for sure. Thanks for watching.